Again, welcome everybody and, and thank you for participating in this. This is a, a training about how to use our online beekeeping materials through the Beekeeper Education and Engagement System or the Bees Network. Um, this is specifically targeted to uh, North Carolina Cooperative Extension Agents or the field faculty out, out in the counties. But this is uh, really a general overview as well for, for anybody else um, who might want to participate and to utilize these resources and to collaborate with us in, in your uh, beekeeper training. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, uh, and share my screen and give just kind of a, a brief overview of our bees network. This is something that was started um, almost 10 years ago, it was uh, 2011. It was just a very rudimentary stages actually of, of this. That was uh, right in the wake of having to, to give up the largest master beekeeper program in the nation uh, because of uh, um, personnel losses and budget cutbacks and, and whatnot. And so the beekeepers themselves in North Carolina have been able to uh, keep that going and to uh, maintain the master beekeeper program, but it's no longer an extension program, which I think is a real shame because there's a lot of opportunity and, and indeed need for beekeeper education in the state because North Carolina has the largest concentration of beekeepers in, in the United States. And so we started working on, on these uh, modules and, and the bees network because around that time as well, I um, had started teaching uh, distance education and online in an online environment. I, I moved our advanced beekeeping course from uh, the face-to-face -face version to an online version. And so I became very familiar with the Moodle platform and, and a lot of uh, distance ed education and, and how that can work. And that really opened my eyes to the possibilities of how this could also work through extension as well. And so the uh, beekeeper education and engagement system, as I said, or, or the bees, is all on Moodle. It's all on the Moodle platform. Uh, and I don't know how familiar uh, most of us are with Moodle, but I think a lot of the either mandatory or optional trainings that uh, we are in cooperative extension are um, obligated to do, a lot of times those are done through uh, Moodle as well. So you're probably fairly familiar with it and it's, it's fairly friendly as well. And so um, there's the, the Delta, the distance education branch of uh, NC State University kind of co-opted about uh, five, six years ago, they created a, uh, a new, um, or they, they, they developed a server specifically for outreach and non-credit, non-NC State credit courses. And so this is where all of these, uh, these mini courses and, and training opportunities are, are held. And the way that it's set up is that the courses are all asynchronous. That is, uh, I and our team in the NC State Apiculture Program have developed and, and shot videos, the training videos on all sorts of different topics. Uh, and they're posted on each in these individual online courses. And so the user can just come in and very, very readily and easily, you know, click on these videos and watch a lecture from me uh, and go back, watch it again, move around. Uh, there's no live interaction, uh, but it's all something that they can do on their own at their own pace and at their own time. Um, they can get a 30 day unlimited access through the reporter mechanism. That's again, uh, another online tool for uh, credit card payments and whatnot. And it's really seamlessly integrated with the Delta outreach server so that all they have to do is um, pay through reporter and they get automatic access to uh, to the course that, that they enrolled in. Um, that 30 day time limit doesn't start until they actually enter the course for the very first time. So theoretically somebody uh, can, can register and pay for it and then wait 
any uh, a period of time before they actually take it. And so the um, the the structure of it. We'll talk a little bit about the, just the courses that we have and just the the availability that we have, and the overall structure that um, I envisioned from the very beginning. But it hasn't really kind of come to fruition until fairly recently, till we kind of built up our team and, and support network for uh, the bees network, is that there's uh, kind of three ascending levels, the beginner level, the advanced level, and the what I call the ambassador level. And then there's three different tracks. So there's this track here on biology, there's this track here on management, and then a track on the industry. And this is actually taken off of um, the, the non-major science course that, that I teach here at NC State, where in order to become you know, fully aware of everything dealing with honeybees, you first have to understand about the bees themselves, right? And then once you understand the bees, then you can build on that beekeeping and the management aspect so that you know how to manipulate the bees uh, through boxes and, and through different management techniques. And then once you understand the bees and beekeeping, then you can talk about the industry overall and, and different aspects of, of how bees and beekeeping influence and are, are interact at the at kind of the societal or the, the community level. And so we have these uh, three different tracks then at these, at these three different levels. And so at the beginner level, there's actually only one course per each of these tracks. So there, this kind of beginner level is really aimed at turning a novice, a non-beekeeper, and giving them enough knowledge and know-how about how to start their own hives, right? Um, and collectively, between the three courses, it's something like five and a half hours of instruction um, and about 15 lectures or so within, within each of these. And so this has been a very popular thing for people who have been sitting on the fence and have always been curious about keeping bees, but they don't really know, you know, they're kind of scared to get into it. The whole idea is to kind of demystify that, give them the basic know-how so that they, they feel empowered to be able to go out and, uh, and start their own hive. And we really, really encourage, especially in the, um, in the, the, the last course, um, to, for them to link up with their local beekeeping group wherever it may be, because it's far easier to start bees while joining the beekeeping community than doing it in a vacuum. They certainly can if they so choose, but um, we, we preach that uh, very strongly. Um, the other courses are on this advanced track. And so a lot of the advanced uh, mini courses that we have, roughly they're all about an hour each. And again, all of these courses can be taken a la carte. So <laughs> individuals can come in and sign up for these things, whichever ones they want. There's no prerequisites. You don't have to take this one before you take that one or anything like that. This is all completely a la carte so that beekeepers or uh, interested individuals can just come in and take whatever courses they so choose. And so the beginner course, courses are really designed for the kind of novices or non-beekeepers to become beekeepers. These courses are aimed at existing beekeepers and really at all levels. We're not talking about just master beekeepers or those that have been doing it for 10 years. This is really information for anybody who's been keeping bees for a year or two or three up to 10 years or so. Um, and so again, it follows these three tracks. We have the kind of the biology content where we have courses on foraging biology, anatomy, breeding, mating, pheromones. We then have a um, management track where we talk about advanced management techniques, stocks, uh, pesticide or uh, uh, diseases, um, queen ring, those types of things. Um, and then for the society, we, we have three courses on Africanized bees, history, and uh, pesticides and inter, uh, how bees interface with, uh, with pesticides. And so um, again, these are all, um, a la carte where individuals can come in and enroll in these. 
and take them at their own leisure. Uh, at the end of each of these courses, they have an associated quiz. And so if they pass that quiz, that online quiz, at 80% or better, they can download their very own e-certificate that gives their name, the date, and the, uh, the, the passing grade on the quiz that they got. And um, none of it is binding. It's all just for you know, certificate of completion. Uh, but again, I think a lot of people have been going through and uh, getting a lot out of these things and, and collecting these e-certificates um, uh, and, and maybe not posting them on the wall, but at, at the very least uh, having pride that they were able to go through these different courses. Any questions so far? I want to make sure that um, I'm addressing the questions that you guys have. I just wanted to make you familiar with the, the online courses that we have and how flexible they can be. Check that website in the chat, if that's all right. Oh, I have not um, seen the, uh, the website is right here, go.ncsu.edu slash bees. Couldn't be simpler. Um, and that will get you to um, the extension portal, the entomology extension portal, where um, you will have the list of the, the different courses and we're adding some all the time. And so we're really um, trying to, to fill out these, uh, these different curricula. And if you have any other ideas, this is a, another great example of where we can collaborate um, and come up with uh, new offerings that we weren't planning on to be in the first place. So another thing that we've done recently as well is that a lot of the popular courses uh, individually and a la carte, uh, we've actually bundled them into a single Moodle course, but it actually has the content of three courses. Uh, so for example, we've bundled the beginner level three courses in bees, the biology, the management, and the industry. Um, and so people can come in and just take it all at once. If they knew that they wanted to take all three, they can just enroll in one course rather than having to enroll in all three. Um, we've done the same for our courses that deal a lot at the advanced level that deal a lot with queens, queen biology and their management. So we have our course on queens and mating, on queen rearing, and then on the honeybee genetic stocks. Um, so those are all associated with each other. And that's something that uh, queen rearing especially is something that a lot of beekeepers at the advanced level really, really are gravitated towards um, once they've had a couple of years under their belt. We also have a, um, a bundle on colony health. So we have one on um, parasites and pathogens. And then we have a specific one on varroa mite um, integrated pest management, which is kind of number one management concern for beekeepers. And then uh, knowing about pesticides and, and how to um, how to cope with, with pesticides in the environment. So those are just some examples. But again, these are things that are very fluid where we can move and modularize these things if there are other bundles um, that people might be interested in. <clears throat> now where um, this becomes particularly important, I think for extension agents or other trainers um, is that these courses and the content on these courses are really ideal for plug and play trainings. And from the very beginning, this was something that I always envisioned of empowering cooperative extension agents or master beekeepers or others who would like to offer courses in particular areas, subject areas, but they themselves don't quite feel competent enough to provide the trainings themselves. That is the content to be able to deliver the content. And so the idea is that at the local level, you can be an organizer uh, and then kind of farm out, collaborate with us with the main content of the, of the video lectures and then fill in the gaps with hands-on activities or a Q&A session with some local beekeepers or a, or a field tour 
or uh, to coordinate a live Zoom Q&A session with me so that after you go through the, the recorded lectures, I can be there and uh, do a Q&A so that it's, it's fairly seamless uh, to, to the end user. The, these are the things that I was always really envisioning because the old model of you know, the, the researcher training the extension specialist, the extension specialist training the county agent, and then the county agent training the grower um, is really become blurred and not very useful when county agents have 27 different commodity groups and beekeeping is um, a, a really, really niche field that is really, really hard to become uh, totally conversive in, right? And so this is a great way to, to be able to plug and play these different um, modules depending on the type of training that you want. You can mix and match these different bees courses and we can come up together with some sort of curriculum depending on what is being offered and depending on how you wanna deliver them uh, and um, be able to, uh, to um, do a training without having to become an expert yourself. And this was really typified and, and exemplified by the bees academies that we did in uh, uh, 2019. We did three of them, uh, one on the coast, one in the Piedmont and one in the mountains. Um, and we had planned on doing several in 2020, but obviously with the lack of face-to-face -face trainings, um, we weren't able to do that. Uh, but this was a great thing. What we did was um, utilized, again, a lot of the same content that's on the Bees Network where we would watch a recorded lecture by me, and then I, I would do a live lecture <laughs> um, and then go back and forth. And so we were able to, to pull and to draw different elements from these different courses uh, and deliver them. And those in the audience didn't really know the difference of whether I was talking live or whether I was on camera. And, I, and then we had hands-on activities and other things to fill in the gaps. And, and I think it worked really, really well. Um, Mark, you uh, were um, our collaborator with the one on the coast down in uh, Brunswick County. Um, how did you feel that the, um, uh, the academy went from your perspective? It was a really good opportunity for beekeepers in the whole area. I mean, we had people from within Brunswick, but also neighboring counties and halfway up the coast. So it's, it's a neat way to, to, to get some traction for your program, get some more people interested in it, and have all these campus resources without going all the way to Raleigh or have a lot of involvement there. So we had David come down, like you said, that he would show a video of himself and then he would kind of walk away and people didn't realize that they <laughs> was in the back of the room while he was up there on the, the screen talking. That was one of the, the nervous points that the team that David put this together were concerned about, but that, that worked really smoothly. So I'm gonna do that more with be, the Beekeepers Association that's here in my county. The beauty of this thing was, was short time frame, but also the hands-on component. And that I think that really made it for people. It was in-depth yeah. information and then a lot of hands-on stuff. So we had different stations set up around our, our office here and our demonstration garden where people would melt and pour lip balms, mix them up and do that. And we made pollen patties. We identified pollinators that were not honeybees in a little spot that's here. So one of the folks came down from campus and we were catching critters and, and identifying them, keying them out. That, that was really neat. People really appreciated those hands-on parts. And the level of content is kind of pitched to be getting you ready for a journeyman exam. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily include the journeyman exam, but it kind of, it's at that level. It's more than than your standard B school. And it's not way up in the, the master beekeeper, master craftsman sort of stuff, uh, content. 
It's right there. It's super useful. The, the people I talk to that seem to get the most actionable stuff out of it are beekeepers that, that are a little more than hobby. So people that are doing beekeeping for additional income and, and almost to that, this is, this is my part-time or full-time job, almost to that point. Those are the folks that, that really engaged with the content, ate it all up and put it to use. Everybody enjoyed it and appreciated it, but I think that's where the, the real traction is for making that happen. And that's not stuff that, that I have that I can, me personally, really make a difference in those people's operations. So I know, I know plenty, I've been keeping bees myself, but that level of that 50 to 100 hive sort of operation is, is more than, than I have to, to just pull out of my pocket and, oh yeah, we should talk about this, that, and the other. So I think that's the, the real spot for me that, that helped with my program. So, so you, you bring <laughs> up two really critical points there, Mark. Um, one is that the hands-on part uh, is something that is really appreciated and really helps make these trainings and codify kind of what we learn kind of in the classroom but it's something that inherently you can't do online. So this is where it's a perfect collaboration, right? Between us with that kind of the content and then you being able to put your own take on it, depending on your local resources, your, the availability, the things that you want to do and that you can do and that you feel comfortable doing. And then you can just modularize the, the lecture content accordingly, right? Um, so that's, that's really, really important. Um, the second part is that exactly what you were saying before is that, um, you know, you don't feel comfortable at those kind of higher levels. I know that um, a lot of the agents and especially the, uh, the local beekeeper associations do a fantastic job at beginner bee schools, right? They, like every winter, about half of the, the chapters out there hold some sort of winter beginner bee school, again, to turn novice non-beekeepers into beekeepers. But they've never really um, uh, risen to the challenge of taking existing beekeepers and making them better. <laughs> um, and so that this is where I think extension can really play a, cr a critical role, again, and if there's a way to ease that burden of you guys yourselves having to become an expert in everything beekeeping, that's, that's a lot to ask. This is a way to really grease the skids on that and, and to collaborate with us on that um, more advanced content, but you can still do what you do best, which is to deliver it, right? Um, and so we don't have to be there to do that hands-on part, right? Uh, you know, over here is uh, Sharon Munger, uh, who's online with us here. She's actually the coordinator of the bees network and the bees academy um so we're you know any when we try to put on any of these trainings you'd be going through her so that you know i can be focusing on the content and and thinking of of new courses and and those kind of things um so we, we don't actually have to be there but we are more than happy to coordinate with you about well what are some of the resources at the local level that you can draw on and, and be able to do some of that hands-on stuff um, uh, with us there or without us there. But at the same time, there's also, I think, a real opportunity, especially in this time of COVID, I'll go back to this real quickly, um, to have entirely online <laughs> trainings, right? So I think, um, you know, a lot of us with the constraints that we're currently under, we might want those hands-on things, but we're either prohibited or, you know, that the, the clientele might not want to have hands-on stuff. And it just might be too difficult. And so you can still have these trainings by you as the extension agent, you know, being able to have access to the content and then being able to play the videos through Zoom to others who are joining your Zoom session, right? Um, and then 
watching these videos in real time. And then when the video is done, you can then have a Q and A, or you can, you know, uh, have other discussions and other things. So the, uh, these things can be entirely online, or you can you can modularize them with with uh, some in person or and or hands on content as well. Um, you know, I think that uh, it really is kind of liberating to think about the different options that they have. There's one other option that we do. Um, and that is uh, what's known in the distance education parlance as a flipped course. <laughs> so this is something that we do um, after most of the county chapter B schools have already run their course or they're, they're at least already underway. Again, we do in no way do we want to compete with them. Uh, they already do an excellent job. A lot of the times it's a big revenue generator for the local club. So we don't want to impede that in any way. But there's some people that just can't make it or it's just too far a drive or they heard about the registration too late or the course was already full and they couldn't get in. So we offer those the bundled three beginner courses online. Um, and what we do, and this is the flipped part of it, is that uh, for one week, their kind of homework is to watch the, the online content of the first course. And then we meet by Zoom and convene live to discuss what they learned that week. And then the next week they learn the second course and then we uh, meet online and discuss. So they actually do the content first before we discuss it rather than the other way around. Um, and so that kind of gives the flexibility of being able to do it at their own pace and at their own time, but also having that live component where there's direct interaction with the instructors um, and, and with each other, right? So there's lots of different ways that, um, you know, that these things can be, can be portrayed. And, you know, if you have any questions about or, or ideas about what you might want to do, we're more than willing to, to collaborate and to work with you. There's a question here from Linda saying, can we explain who in the uh, NCSU Apiculture Program uh, helped with the Brunswick County, right? And, uh, and what can they do? So um, Sharon, as I uh, showed before, um, was the coordinator. So she's over here on the right. Um, she, yes, there she is. Um, uh, sh well, why don't you explain, Sharon, kind of what you did from behind the scenes to make everything work for these academies? Well, let me say we got better and better at it. I mean, we started off a little rough <laughs> and then um, with experience, like anything else um, you learn and you apply those learnings. Um, we took all the um, registrations and put those together, sent out information. We put bags together with uh, the booklets and some swag that included a t-shirt and some things like that. Uh, and then we logged people in or you know, registered them as they walked through the doors. Um, and fed them and uh, gave them drinks like nobody's business. <laughs> um, we, you know, we made sure ahead of time that the rooms were set up. We, you know, we did all the behind the scenes kinds of things. And then also uh, we went through some dry runs to make sure that all of the uh, electronic equipment was gonna work and, and um, be successful. And that was all in co uh, collaboration with Mark and, and Seth and oh, Debbie um, yeah. at, the, at the different uh, We couldn't places. have done it any, any other way. Yeah, so, so, so Sharon is definitely your point of contact. Um, then we had, on the second day when we had um, kind of the hands-on components in the afternoon, we were uh, very kindly joined by the local NCDA apiary inspector who are kind of real rock stars and really critical people for, for beekeepers in their, in their areas um, to go over different hands-on things. We had some graduate students some of which are still here, some of whom are, are uh, now gone, uh, but they were able to come down and, and do some of these you know, hands-on activities as Mark was uh, explaining. Um, and so really is about discussing out the resources local or otherwise that you can bring to bear and uh, trying to put a curriculum together or an agenda together that works for uh, your needs. Another question here from Shannon, um, if our club is interested in this, would each person register for the class or is there an option for a club price? 
or is there a way to share with other counties? Um, the uh, answer to both of those is, um, is yes, <laughs> in the sense that <clears throat> um, the, if, if, you, if each student needs to go on to the Moodle platform, then they have to register separately through Reporter and get funneled to the particular course each individually. And from there, we can then bundle those individuals so that they can see and interact with each other, but not anybody else who's taking the course. So that's a possibility. Or, and I think this is what you're getting at, Sharon, that's a lot, uh, Shannon, that's a lot uh, easier, is that you, as the agent or the point of contact, have access to the content, but then you share that content from Moodle through Zoom or some other platform so that the individual students don't need to go in and you know, deal with Moodle and, and registering or anything like that, right? So it's if you are going to be the, the gateway into the Moodle platform, that's one way, or if you're going to convene online with them, that's another way. So those are all different um, logistics that, that we can work out depending on what you're looking for. But I think that's probably the easiest, easiest way um, to be able to, to get people involved in this. Now, I do want to mention just really quickly, there is that kind of last and top um, ambassador level. And this is where kind of the engagement part comes in of the uh, beekeeper education and engagement system. Um, and this is where we really like to collaborate with beekeepers. So this is, we don't have classes involved in this, but this is another aspect of cooperative extension where we're, at, we're literally collaborating with beekeepers to conduct these um, different trainings or different uh, ways to give back to the beekeeping community. And so in the one track, um, if those beekeepers or yourselves as an ambassador, right, is to put on a bee school or a workshop or a field day, right, that is engagement um, in that first track at the ambassador level. We're also very open to write extension articles or online extension notes or otherwise, um, you know, talking about beekeeper and beekeeper education. And then finally, we're also very involved with a lot of beekeepers, both in and outside of the Master Beekeeper Program, of doing research with them. Um, you know, a lot of these beekeepers are very interested. They have uh, X number of hives and they have a lot of um, uh, interests about questions about improving management. And we work with them on experimental design and data collection and statistical analyses and those kind of things for them to conduct these, uh, these experiments that can then be informative to the rest of the beekeeping community. And some of these have actually been published in uh, peer-reviewed articles, uh, peer-reviewed journals. Others have been um, uh, um, published in the, uh, the newsletter of the beekeepers. Uh, so there's lots of different ways to be engaged beyond just uh, these, these courses. But uh, to, to this point, the, the online trainings, I think, are, um, are a great way to, um, to be able to, to take advantage of the, of the bees content. So any other questions that I'm, that I'm missing here? Any uh, impediments that you think might be difficult from, from your end? Any, um, other topics or courses that you think might be more useful than, than what we currently have. Hey, David, this is Bill in Haywood mm -hmm. County. What kind of advanced time, you know, should we start working on this if we wanna do one of these things uh, with our local club? Um, I guess as much time as, as we have, but 
it depends on on how kind of elaborate or how much of it you want to do. Some of these are just immediately, you know, plug and play and can be done very, very quickly. If we need to create a new course and move some content around and that kind of stuff, that might take a couple weeks or, or something like that. But um, it's not like a year in advance for planning. Now for the academies, those kind of things, um, that probably would take a couple months to kind of think through and especially to market and to advertise um, uh, because those tend to be much broader and bigger. Um, you know, the one in Chatham County was near 100 people. Um, and, and they, as Mark was saying, it really drew people from, from the entire area and region. So you want enough time to be able to get that out and to, to advertise for that. So it really depends on the scale that you're talking about, Bill. And, um, you know, it, it can be a kind of a small five person training or it can be, you know, that's all online or it can be an in-person thing with 100 people. Um, and, you know, that, that probably take a little more time. I have another question uh, for you guys about, um, you know, getting the word out to uh, other clubs, to other agents, um, to other beekeepers, but most importantly, how to reach the non beekeepers. <laughs> this is something we really struggle with because we in our networks, right, we're plugged in with, you know, Cooperative Extension, with the, the State Beekeepers Association, their local clubs, we have our own kind of newsletter and, and email list, but those are all existing beekeepers. Um, you know, any ideas about how to reach non beekeepers or, or other individuals who might otherwise be attracted to some of these things? David, this is, this is Seth in Caldwell County. Oh, hey Seth. Hey, um, well, and I guess part of it with, you know, with how to communicate with non beekeepers what would what would you hope to gain by communicating? Is it to make them beekeepers or make them aware of bees, or what would the goal be? I think, um, in my experience, it would be that there's a a a very large reservoir of people out there who are intrigued about beekeeping, but they're too afraid, or it just seems too daunting to get into it. And so, you know, I still think even though we have, you know, 5,000 members of our state association, there's 15,000 beekeepers in North Carolina alone, I still think there's probably a lot of other people out there who have always wanted to do this, but it just seems too much for them. Um, and they don't know about our cooperative extension networks and the, and the local bee schools and these other things. Um, and so how to reach them, I think, is what I'm getting at. I, I agree. I think, I, think, I think there's a lot of people out there that they just immediately like bees and they want to know a little bit more about it. And um, I, I just wasn't sure exactly what, what slant you were taking with connecting with non-beekeepers. But I, I, think, I think there's a large, there's a large group of uh, either armchair beekeepers or something, uh, people that are just interested. Right. Um, I, I know that we publish, uh, we send to the paper a weekly article, news article. Okay. And um, that may be something that, that could be pushed out um, if, if you were, if you wanted to put together a news article on that. Sure. Um, and certainly I think our master gardeners, um, you know, we've got folks that are planting pollinator gardens and, and are trying to create bee habitat. And I think they might they might be interested. Um, they're, they're extension clients, but they're not, they're not in the B program. Right, right. Uh, those are great, great suggestions, Seth. I, I'd be happy to, uh, to work with you in writing up kind of a local um, uh, kind of newspaper column. I don't know how the, the size or the level or any of that, so I could really use your, your help on that. But if we have something like that, then we could share amongst ourselves if others want to disseminate in the same way. I think that's really excellent. Yeah, I'll, I'll get some, I'll get some parameters to you. Pretty much uh, the newspaper has always been very nice. Uh, whatever we send them, they, we, we try to keep it a page and a half or two pages, but, right, uh, but right. they, they're very gracious, but I, yeah, I'll, I'll touch base with you. And I, and I think I'll probably ask 
some of our master gardeners uh, sure. that, that are interested in pollinator habitats and and in and, and just are I, I call them bee friendly people maybe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just ask them maybe get some feedback and share that with you David yeah no that would be great Sharon also makes a good point here about um, that this can also be useful for 4-H for Hers. It's not um, specifically designed for um, youth beekeepers, but it's not unattainable to them either, right? So I think, um, you know, it's kind of a one size fits all for all, all beekeepers at these, at, at these different levels, but it's certainly something that could be very well incorporated into 4-H um, training, especially um, kind of in high school level or so. Um, and then again, filling in the gaps with other age appropriate activities or discussions or, or things like things like that. And so I think um, there's there's lots of different ways that um, that these can be that the content can be utilized. And I would say like, you know, here's all their other groups and institutions too looking so like here in Greenville, the city of Greenville, as well as ECU are trying to become be friendly become yep. a be friendly campus. And so they're, they're trying to put in both pollinator borders and such around the county buildings. And then on campus, they've actually put in some rooftop beehives uh, and all as well as trying to encourage other pollinator plants and things. And they're always looking for kind of stuff to share with their students. Yeah. You know, hey, we're putting in this pollinator garden, you know, share some facts in their kind of yeah. Yeah. campus pub publicity stuff they're doing for their, for their pollinator projects they're trying to put in as well. So that's actually um, a really, really good point in the sense that that is kind of a glaring hole in the content that we have right now. All of the courses and content that we have is all about beekeeping of honeybee, managed honeybees, right? But those issues would fit really, really well in that um, kind of society track at the advanced level talking about other pollinators talking about uh, pollinator habitat, which not just helps honeybees, but all bees, right? And just knowing that not all honeybee, not all bees are honeybees, right? That's a, that's a big misconception that's out there. And so um, that, that could go um, in any number of directions. Now, my professional failing is not knowing my bee plants. You know, I know, I know bees, I don't know the plants, <laughs> um, but there's so much um, expertise and experience in horticulture, both in the counties and on campus, that I'm sure we could come up with a really excellent, even kind of mini module of, you know, bee, bee friendly plantings in, in different ways. And I know some of these things are already going on. And so it'd be a great way to capture that. Um, and again, put it online so that it's modularized and can be used in this flexible way. Any other uh, thoughts or questions about this? Again, there, you know, there's no um, kind of take home or action items here. It's other than just uh, wanting to familiarize everybody with uh, the bees network and, and how it can be utilized. And just as an initial request and, and idea of, of how to start collaborating on these things. And so um, if this has piqued your interest in any way, please get in touch with me or Sharon um, and we'll be happy to continue those discussions. You, one of your questions was how to reach non beekeepers and even current beekeepers are yeah. looking on YouTube for any question they have. Yep. And if you're trying to capture people that are about to get started in beekeeping, it seems like they go and look for, for stuff Yep. online sources for woodenware and for suits and veils. So I don't know if there's a way to connect with those those catalogs or, or something. If you yeah. could make some personalized content for Kelly and then... Yeah, that's a great idea, Mark. I think um, we, we might be able to liaise with, with some of those. Unfortunately, um, uh, what, one of the issues I think that comes up with both how to start beekeeping in a vacuum, 
as well as the kind of YouTube content that's out there already, is that you're kind of drinking out of a fire hose. And again, this is one of those impediments of those non beekeepers of getting into beekeeping is that there's so much out there, you don't really even know where to begin. There's so much of this, you know, you go on to those things and they're selling all sorts of stuff. You don't really know what, what you need and what is, is extra, right? Um, there's, there's so many YouTube videos that vary in quality, let's just say, um, and, you know, might not be the exact right thing that you need. And so I think this is where the trusted brand of Cooperative Extension, right, and NC State University can really come to bear, realizing this is packaged by those of us that do this for a living. And so we know that, um, that this is a good kind of one-stop shop for that. But the advertising part, that's a great thing. Uh, Sharon, hopefully we can remember that and make sure we circle back to that to see if um, there may be ways to, um, to be prominent in kind of the online or in the catalogs of a lot of these beekeeping supply companies. It's a great idea. Going on that, do you have a portal for apiary set up, apiary portal set up yet? That's be another option. So when they do a Google search that it comes up, you know, the portal would come up with the list of resources and all how to, you know, here's the short courses and all that. Yeah, that's a great question. Actually, this link that's on the slide right now, the uh, go.ncsu.edu oh, yeah. slash bees goes to our bees page on the entomology portal. So we do have a, an apiculture and beekeeping kind of sub page within that, that portal page. Um, and then this is one of, one of those pages. But we also have links, we also have a page for our uh, webinar series. So we've been doing these bi-weekly apiculture online webinars that have been bugging you every other week, tw uh, tw twice every other week, um, all, all year long. But our um, YouTube channel, um, we have, uh, kind of traditional beekeeping notes and extension articles. Um, you know, we have our uh, quarterly newsletter on there, uh, other information. And so that portal is, um, uh, Mark just put it into the chat there. Thank you very much. And uh, that's kind of a one-stop shop within uh, cooperative extension. We have kind of a parallel pages where it talks about our entire program. So there's a lot of overlap between the portal where we don't have as much um, control over the formatting and it's all um, self-contained within extension. But we also have information, uh, diff additional information about the Bees Network, our research, our uh, teaching and other things as well at uh, ncsuapiculture.net. Uh, so those things are, are kind of in parallel. And so when one does a, uh, a Google search for online beekeeping courses, ours is among the top that, that come up uh, every single time, especially in this area. And so it gets a lot of traffic, uh, probably the most traffic on the, on the entomology portal overall. So, um, and I think that the more that, that people link to it and, and share each other, I think the algorithms improve the, the, the search results. And so um, keep, keep using that. And, and I think uh, that, that will help us out a lot. So I would like to say that David Shop does things a little differently. When you do other programs and look for resources, from NC State, very few of them charge anything for it. Yep. So David's having to pay for some people, some of his, his staff salaries through this stuff. So that's that's why. So there's there's value in this, and the money's going to making it better, keeping it going. Yep. And you can put all this stuff together and have a really whiz bang apiculture program in your county between the bees content that's online that you can enhance your bee schools with or talk on a monthly session of a, of a association meeting, but you can also bring in those recordings from the hive chats. Yep. You can send out the Wolfpack waggle and enhance what you got for our 
largest concentration of beekeepers in America, yep. right here in North Carolina. So we can we can keep that strong with the resources that David and his people are doing. Thank, thanks for that, Mark. I really appreciate that. And you're exactly right that it does scale, right? We we do offer a lot of stuff for free, but it also scales. So the more uh, intensive stuff uh, does carry a premium. And so in order to keep that sustainable, um, that's that's really necessary and uh, and, and part of that a part of that model. But yeah, all it does is just feed back into the bees network to to keep it uh, self sustaining financially. So uh, with that, I think um, if there are no other questions, again, please don't hesitate to, to contact me uh, or Sharon uh, if you have any questions. And, and again, I think this is a, a good opportunity to, to be able to utilize some of this uh, ease content for online trainings. And uh, I appreciate your attention.